on the 13th of May 1945, two German officers were led onto a firing range, where they were then shot and executed by fellow German soldiers and prisoners of war. It was one of the most shocking executions of the whole of the Second World War, as the Allies allowed their enemies to have weapons and condemn two prisoners of war. But throughout the conflict, and especially during World War I, being accused of cowardice and desertion was considered the most shameful and disgraceful of crimes. The British Army would execute over 300 soldiers during World War I, convicted of military offences such as desertion, but Hitler would, during World War II, execute many Germans who were considered to have committed dereliction of their duty. However, there were a number of German deserters who were executed following the surrender to the Allies, and even after Hitler had died inside of his Führerbunker in Berlin. But what actually happened to these German deserters is strange, as they were illegally court-martialed, and this was then overseen by the Allies. But there were lots of people who were seen as war criminals, and some Germans who would be sent to concentration camps for desertion, but they were then executed. But what is the story of the German deserters who were executed in May 1945? Join us as we look at this, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The feeling amongst the Allies when it came to desertion during World War II was not as strong as it was during the First World War. There were some Allied soldiers who were shot for military offences, but after the outrage of those shot at dawn executions in World War I, most soldiers who deserted would be held in prison and would be locked up, or would be disgracefully discharged from the armed forces. But the German army would not show as much sympathy. It's believed that 22,500 German soldiers during World War II were sentenced to death for desertion, and around 15,000 of these men were shot on firing ranges, or were in fact guillotined for betraying Hitler's Third Reich. There were another 5,000 people who were executed and condemned for defeatism, and propagating critical comments about the German army, or subversion of the national defence. Criticising the Wehrmacht and Hitler would be deadly, and it was considered very damaging. But many more died inside of German prisons, and some of these men had been pardoned for their crimes, but the Nazi hierarchy were clear what would happen to deserters. They said the soldier can die, the deserter must die, as the Nazis wanted to stamp this out. But as the Second World War went against the Germans, and things got incredibly tough, following defeats at Stalingrad and in North Africa, desertion became a much more prominent and serious problem inside of the Wehrmacht. The problem of desertion got exacerbated following the Allied landings of D-Day, with the Normandy landings, and the advances that the Allies made quickly inside of France further demoralised the Germans. Some German soldiers believed that this was the end of the war once and for all, and because of this there were over 100,000 German deserters who would leave their battalions, and would leave the battlefield and attempt to return home. These men saw defeat coming with their own eyes, and they then left their post, and some would even begin to question the actions of the Nazis, and would go further. Stefan Hampel, a Wehrmacht soldier, when he saw the slaughter of Jews in Belarus, took matters into his own hands, and he would even burn his German army uniform, and he joined up with a Polish resistance group, who were based in Lithuania. He would later be arrested for this, and was then condemned to death, but his execution would never be carried out. There were many others who deserted, and they would be then sent to court-martial once arrested, and they were often condemned without any evidence being given. But many Germans were shot on sight, and if there was any suspicion of anti-Hitler sentiment, then these people in the eyes of the Nazis needed dealing with. Of course throughout the war, even some high-ranking Nazis, such as Rudolf Hess, and even Heinrich Himmler, could have been considered deserters to the Nazi cause, and it was said that military justice was above all political justice, serving to stabilise Nazi power and to prolong the war. Another deserter was a soldier named Baumann, who would escape to France. He stole a pistol and a torch, and he left Bordeaux wearing civilian clothing, having ditched his German uniform. He was captured alongside another man, and was caught by German guards at a border crossing. On the 30th of June 1942, three judges sentenced the deserters to death in the name of the German people but Baumann's father managed to get the death sentence overturned, and this was commuted to 12 years in prison. However, Baumann would see more action. He would be forced to serve inside of a punishment prisoner battalion to fight against the Red Army. But one of the most infamous incidents of desertion in the German army saw a number of men executed by their own people and soldiers in 1945, 
and this was considered very shocking, as the war had come to an official end in Europe, and the armed forces of Germany had surrendered, meaning they were not in conflict. But this was a series of executions that had taken place five days after Nazi Germany had officially surrendered to the Allies, along with the Wehrmacht and the armed forces. But the case of the deserters involved an illegal court-martial, with a group of disarmed German officers who had been held inside Allied captivity, and these men acted as the judge and the jury. The Allies in the Netherlands and inside of Amsterdam used the German officers to have a trial for two German deserters from the Kriegsmarine, and these men, Bruno Dörfer and Rania Beck, had been caught fleeing from the German Navy. There were many who did this in the last months of the Second World War, but the Allied authorities allowed the German prisoners to carry out a trial involving the deserters, but with other prisoners of war acting as judges, and this show trial occurred inside of an abandoned Ford Motor Company assembly plant on the outskirts of Amsterdam. The plant was being used at the time as an Allied prison camp, which was being run and overseen by the Canadian Army. It was said of the trial that, under a dubious interpretation of international law, Canadian military authorities permitted a continuation of the German military structure after the demise of the Third Reich. German assistance was indispensable in the disarmament, concentration and evacuation of the German armed forces within Holland. Unfortunately, disinterested Canadian military authorities also left the German military in control of order and discipline. German commanders and military judges applied a military law warped by national socialism. During this trial, the German officers and soldiers found the two members of the Kriegsmarine guilty of desertion, and they then sentenced them to death. This was strange and of course had no legal standing and was in a legal court, but after this the Nazi prisoners of war arranged a firing squad of their own men to carry out the executions. It's not known why the Canadian army oversaw this and allowed this to take place and did not step in. It may have been through hatred of the German forces, or may have been through entertainment, or may have been sheer panic about trying to prevent it. But they would give the German prisoners of war rifles and a free ton truck. They were given an escort by a platoon of Canadian soldiers, and the men were then led towards the firing range which had been gathered. But the Canadian army would equip their enemy with weapons, and they would then allow prisoners to shoot and execute other prisoners under their custody. On the firing range, the two men were secured to a stake, before they then faced the German firing squad, who were primed with their rifles and were ready to shoot. They then shot the two deserters, and the two Kriegsmarine members were instantly killed. The justification of this was that the Canadians felt they had to get the German prisoners on their side, and that the guards did try to keep them in good minds and good spirits, and they did not want them to rebel against them. But this execution took place five days after the surrender was signed for the Germans, but it's possible the executioners wanted to punish people who they believed had shamed their country, and who they blamed for losing the war. Goebbels and the Ministry of Propaganda had managed during the conflict to convince the population of Germany that there was no other way than Hitler's will and the Wehrmacht's power. They convinced people that fighting for a new empire and for the good was the best way, but they saw desertion as similar to murder, and they treated people who did this as scum. The amount of desertion rose during the final days of the war, but Hitler would even summon the Volkssturm, a group of civilians who were armed with whatever weapons they could, to fight. But thousands of Germans would later surrender, but these men were said to have gone against Hitler and subverted the war effort. There were many accounts of deserters being executed using the guillotine and the firing squads, but the Germans were much more ruthless than the Allies with regards to dealing with desertion. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.